Please join me in the call to worship. You are God's chosen and special people, a holy nation and a peculiar treasure. We are brought out of shame into, into God's, God's marvelous, marvelous truth, truth to tell all the wonderful, wonderful things, things God, God has done. Once you were considered to be nobodies. Now, now we, we are, are God's people. At one time, no one had mercy on you. Now, now God, God has treated, treated us with, with kindness. join me in the prayer of confession in the face of denials of love destruction of lives and deprivation of liberties we pray to the god of love to be, to be renewed, renewed as, as angels, angels of, of compassion. compassion in the experiences of continuing oppressions challenges of abuse and complicit silence we pray to the God of love to be renewed as angels of courage. In the midst of shame and suffering, doubts and despair, hurt and hate, we pray to the God of love to, to be renewed as angels of joy. In the times when we feel unappreciated, unseen, and unheard, remind us who we are. We are beautiful people of God. Give us the continued strength and voice to proclaim, We are still here. May we know that we are each created in God's image, remarkably and wonderfully made eternally embraced by love, called into divine life. Let us be people of courage, compassion, and joy, knowing that we are forgiven and renewed. Thanks be to God. We are renewed, that we might reflect 
God's love and compassion and courage for the world. And having that sense of God's presence in the highs and the lows, in the midst of all the challenges we face, can give us a sense of peace, which comes from God and nowhere else. Holy God, there are days that feel as dry as the desert, and we long for your word to quench our thirsts. This may be such a day. And there may be those of us that have a word to share to quench the thirst of others. So wherever it is we are, God, and whatever it is we have to offer, may we do so gratefully and graciously, always reflecting your presence in the world. Amen. We start in Genesis with a story that is unfolding. We've been listening to parts of this story for a couple of weeks and it continues on again today. Uh, we begin with the story of Ishmael, uh, the son of Hagar by Abraham. The child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. As she departed, she wandered about the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she sat down Sorry, then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, do not let me look on the death of my child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his wife, his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. And a second reading from the sixth chapter of Romans. Paul writes, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The story of Hagar and Ishmael is one of those that um, stays with me. I don't know that it's uh, necessarily you know, in anyone else's top 10 or top 20 or however you might list favorite scripture passages, but it's one that moves me each time I read it. And I find it moving for a variety of reasons. One reason is that I think it holds us as people of faith accountable for how we treat others. Abraham and Sarah were chosen. God spoke to Abraham directly and laid out a roadmap and showed him where to go. And Sarah followed faithfully. They trusted humored sometimes. Last week we heard Sarah laugh at the idea that at 89 she was going to be pregnant. Really, God? Really? But the big three monotheistic traditions of the world, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all trace their ancestry back to Abraham. He is the beginning of this extended family lineage. God spoke to Abraham and led him, showed him the way. And if you read Abraham's story, you know he was not a saint, right? Can we agree on that? Not in the beatified sense, maybe in you know, the Pauline sense that we're all saints, but we know that, right? We've been practicing that theology. Abraham uh, made some choices that were deeply challenging, deeply problematic. And this is one of those stories. One, because Abraham and Sarah enslaved people, including Hagar, an Egyptian woman. Today, we use the language of human trafficking. But that was part of what they, they were doing. When Sarah couldn't have a child and gave Hagar to Abraham, Hagar didn't have a choice in that. And she conceived and gave birth to Ishmael. And when Sarah is jealous, banishes her, sends her out into the desert more than once. In this particular story in the 21st chapter of Genesis, though, Abraham sends Hagar out into the desert with a loaf of bread and a skin of water. And that's it. Where is she to go? How is this anything but a death sentence? Well, 
And when the water's gone and her hope with it, and all that's left is the terrifying fear of watching what happens to her child. I can imagine her placing him in the only shady place she could find under a bush. And then walking a distance away. So maybe he wouldn't hear her weep. But God did. And God hears Ishmael's voice. God hears the boy. We don't know what the boy said or cried or mumbled or whispered. And I don't know what Hagar might have expected from this God. This God of Abraham and Sarah, the God of the people oppressing her, enslaving her, assaulting her, banishing her endangering her life. And I don't know what Abraham and Sarah thought was going to happen either. Why the chosen people would enslave someone, assault them, and then banish them, except that that has been the story of communities of faith forever. There are religious folk who are convinced they are chosen and someone else is a threat. And so they're banished. They're refused sacraments, denied membership, harmed by words and actions of faith communities. It's scripture. It happens. But apparently that isn't God's way because God is also present in the desert. And Abraham and Sarah might be chosen, but God is with Hagar. God is with the one who is enslaved, assaulted, oppressed. And God's promises to her and to Ishmael are just as reliable as they are to Abraham and Sarah and Isaac. God shows Hagar the well, and she draws water, and she gives it to her boy. And he grows and thrives, and the promise is fulfilled. He becomes his own great nation. When Paul is writing to the Romans, there is also fear there. Fear of death. Fear of what it means to be accused of sin or living with sin. Um, I have not yet met anyone living who is perfect, who is sin-free. So I'm just going to presume that's all of us. Fair? God is present with us too. Is present with us in our deserts. Frees us from what oppresses us. That we might celebrate. Joyfully celebrate. The love of God in our own lives. And throughout the world. We, as people of faith, believe that death does not have the final word. We are resurrection people. And so all of those griefs that we have experienced in loss of relationships, in loss of friendships, loss of family, 
do not have the final word. Once upon a time, I was asked by a woman who come, came from a Pentecostal background, how come Presbyterians don't talk about the end times and the rapture? And I stopped to think about it a minute and I said, well, I think it's because we've read to the end of the book and we know that God wins. Love wins. The way of Jesus is the way of love. Which is stronger than death and fiercer than the grave. So, with pride and joy, may we celebrate the love of God reflected in our lives and in the lives of those around us. May we live with gratitude and grace that others might know that love as well. Thanks be to God for loving us. Amen. Each of you is a gift from God to share in whatever ways bless you. You're not asked to share in ways that harm you ever. None of us needs to be driven out into the desert or into a closet for the sake of someone else's comfort or security. You are a gift because God loves you and showing up is one of the ways you share those gifts. We share our gifts in many different ways. In our time of offering, we share our financial gifts as well as gifts of presence and prayers. And so you can do so in all the usual ways. And by living with gratitude, others might recognize that they are also gifted by God. For all those gifts, we offer our thanks.
invite you to join me in this time of prayer. God of plenty, bless these gifts and the ones who gave. May our circle of giving and receiving draw us close, with each one's gift cherished and each one's needs met. Now, God, we come together. We pray this prayer that you have taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to sing again. It is a joy to be in ministry with all of you in this place at First Presbyterian in Springfield. And I'm proud of the work that we do to build community, to serve our neighbors, to walk faithfully in the world. And people see it, they recognize it, they're moved by it. Even if they don't show up here, People know that we live what we value and that our love of God moves us forward. It is joy that we go together and pride in the sense of knowing and celebrating our relationship with God and our community as a as a, the body of Christ. These are good and faithful things. So, as you leave this place, know that you're loved. And so is everyone else. See if there might be a new and different way this week you could reflect that love. Maybe someone's having a hard day or a hard month or a hard life. Maybe they can see God's love for them and you. You are a blessing to everyone here. Thanks for being a blessing to the world. This is the promise made to Abraham and Sarah, to Hagar and Isaac and Ishmael. That a great nation will be made of them. And the families of the earth will be blessed. Thank you for blessing those around you. Amen. Amen. Oh,